All right, so here we are doing a limit test on the new champion that everyone got, Ninja. Max damage, no holding back, seeing what's possible, trying him out in clan boss. So let's see what this champion's really made of. All right, here we are going to the ending turns. What do we have here? All right, dude, he's pumping. And that's the final turn. You've got to be kidding. He did that much? What's going on guys? It is Murdering here back with another Rage Shadow Legends video and as we all saw, we are going to be max damage limit testing ninja, seeing what this guy's made up. I already did a video on him and I'm going to stick with what I said there. That's where you should use him. That's his practical use. I can put absurd gear on literally any champion you want. Shield guard, Kale, Sniper, the first champion we get that's uncommon. I can make them look amazing with my gear. We all know it. I wanted to do it with Ninja because I was curious about a couple things. I'm sure you've seen some of the clan boss videos coming out, but this is next level. This is going to be next level. So what I did was I talked with our good friend and huge shout out to Deadwood Jedi. Huge shout out to him who obviously you guys are expecting this. I saw a few people testing around with Ninja and Clan Boss and some of the speeds were crazy high and I said, you know what? Instead of me spending my time doing this, I already know Deadwood's gonna do it. So we ended up talking in DMs and I was like, thank you, my friend, you saved me so much time. So I went at it, I had at it, so huge shout out to him. If Go check him out if you haven't already. I'm pretty sure all of you have, but you have to give credit where it's due. There's no other way to do it in this business. So with that being said, we are talking about Bat Eater DPS with Ninja. Hold on, Murder, what are you talking about? No defense down, no weaken, but there is a defense down on Ninja. It's not 100%, so how is this even possible? What could the damage possibly be? That's what we're here to find out. So as I said, Bat Eater DPS. Did this guy just say Bat Eater DPS? Sick guys, now all I need is two man eaters, a pain keeper and a seeker. I'm halfway there, right? So with this team, there's so much potential here. Like I said, huge disclaimer. Do not look at this video saying, oh my God, Ninja is amazing now. It's simply not true. I just did something. I used the best gear possible. I'm gonna go ahead at the, towards the end of the video, show you the gear I used for this, how I made this all work. There's a very specific kind of strategy you have to use for this. It does not work on red affinity. So unfortunately the weak hits prevent the turn meter, which messes up the speed tune. So if you are someone who's blessed, who isn't early game, isn't mid game, and can wake up very early in the morning for clan boss reset, or if you live in a time zone where the clan boss reset is the perfect time for you, then you can probably capitalize on this. Is it gonna be risky? I don't think so. The only thing you're not gonna be able to do is set up an AI customization as far as I know and start it off with just hitting auto. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go over what the setup is going to be for this really quickly before we get into some of the huge numbers we're gonna see here today. So what you guys are gonna do is you're gonna follow the typical bad eater setup. Nothing's going to change except for Ninja. So what do I mean by that? So you're gonna do all of the cooldowns like you would for the man eaters, for the pain keeper, for the seeker, except when Ninja goes, and this is very important, so keep this in your mind as you see it on the screen. Ninja's priority is going to be, he's going to use his A2 first on the first time he gets a turn, his A3 third on his second turn, his A1 is going to be the third ability he's going to use, his A2 is going to be the fourth ability he's going to use, then he's going to use an A1 for the fifth ability he's going to use, and then you hit auto. It's not a ton of setup, honestly, you're going to see the total time of the run I did in this video. It really doesn't extend Bat Eater that much longer. There is that whole quality of life thing, can't just hit auto. If you want to use this champion, you've been lacking a bad eater champion and you're okay with two key. Listen, I emphasize two key because I don't think a lot of people are going to be able to one key with this. Me just being honest here, but that's besides the point. This is what you can do. You need this in case anyone's curious because of the turn meter gain he does in fact get from that A1 ability on top of him placing the defense down. Now this is definitely a wide RNG run. I only did this a couple times so maybe I could be 
on the low threshold, maybe I can be in the high threshold. Both runs were semi close to each other once I optimized it as far as my standards went. So maybe we could see even higher numbers. So let's just go ahead and check out this clip. We do have it running here now and he does a lot of damage. He has to ramp up. I've showed you how his passive works in the past. He requires a certain amount of views to kind of trigger this and keep it rolling throughout the run to really make this ninja character pop off for all of you in your team. And now that we covered that, that's pretty much the basic of it. Like I said, I'm going to get over the gear, but let's go to the end of the fight here. Look at the final moments and isn't this beautiful? 88.02 million damage dealt, 44.795 million damage from ninja i wasn't expecting this personally now he is getting the benefit this is a blue affinity boss all the champions here are doing increased damage because they are above 50 percent on void this team does i only tested it once but it did like 83 million damage after that run i kind of increased the gear a little bit more and you're going to notice this when I show you the gear sets. Two of these champions are in a toxic set. One of them is in a fury set and one of them is just in a speed set because I couldn't be bothered with min maxing. How much damage I could lose here for fury set makes sense to go on a, what is it? 267 speed man eater. That's really fast and it's kind of hard to pull off high damaging stats in something like a toxic set and you really don't want too many toxic sets, I would actually prefer two, because if you have three, then the HP burn could possibly not land for Ninja, and that's going to be the, honestly, bulk of his damage. Always, he procs it quite often here. He is pretty much detonating that on the clan boss, doing 75,000 damage three times per A2 usage, so that's pretty good. Yes, his raw damage is good as well, but you definitely have to keep in mind on how strong the HP burn is going to be for this champion here. So now that we went over that, let's go over how I gear these champions. One thing you cannot do with this run is gear ninja in relentless gear. Don't try it, it's not going to work. It's very finicky with that turn meter gain with this A1. Would he be much better? Obviously, you can also not use reflex gear or any type of accessories that reduce cooldown, so on and so forth. So as we can see on the screen here, I went full cruel. Unfortunately, I need accuracy because he does have defense down and the HP burn. I would have loved to build him full damage, no accuracy, and his stats wouldn't have suffered as much. But it is what it is. Mastery is pretty straightforward. You can use the Retribution Talent, which lets him counterattack. It's going to come in handy when trying to land that defense down debuff. That's the good news. Moving on to the fastest man eater. He is going to be in a full speed set. Like I said before, nothing too crazy with the stats. 100% crit rate, as you can all expect from anything that I do. Decent amount of crit damage, attack as high as I could possibly getting it. Mastery is once again pretty straightforward for a bad eater team. Moving on to the second man eater and you're going to tell pretty much when you look at the overview here, 11.5 million damage on one man eater, 8.8 on the other. Can you tell which one is in a fury set? For those of you who don't know, fury is very strong. In fact, it's the strongest solo set for any champion in this game. Assuming you don't sacrifice a ton of stats for damage when making it. If you have full debuffs, if you don't, Toxic definitely takes the cake on that one, which is to be expected. Poisons are very strong in this game, but if you have someone like a Dracomorph, Rio, anyone who's already placing defense down weaken and poisons on the boss, Fury set, hands down, the way to go when trying to maximize damage here. There can be a case made for Relentless Gear, Reflex Set, a little bit RNG. You can definitely play around with that if you want. It's really going to come down to how good your Relentless Gear is and how good your Fury Gear is in the end. So as you can see here, once again, the second man here is wearing Fury Gear. Pretty decent overall stats here, if I may say so myself. Not too many people, if I had to guess, are keeping Fury gear, so this might not be as viable as a strategy. Like I said, I min-max this pretty hard to get the numbers you see here. And moving on to his masteries, those are pretty self-explanatory as well. Moving on to our next champion, which is going to be Seeker here. Seeker is in a toxic set. He's really good in a toxic set. He also does a lot of raw damage on top of that, so I made sure he had a decent amount of crit damage, crit rate, as well as base attack. Mastery is once again 
pretty self-explanatory as far as that goes moving on to our final champion here we have painkeeper also in a toxic set a little bit weird of a champion to build as he scales off of hp attack defense so decent balance of all of them mine didn't do too well in the 88.02 million run he seemed to have had a very low rng in this run despite this being the best one i did record like i said i didn't want to sit here to 15 runs and take the highest i do believe the high end of this team based on what i saw which debuffs landed what didn't land and how often the debuff bar was full during this 88 million run i think 95 million is definitely reachable for this team so after seeing the gear and moving on to the masteries of pain keeper pretty self-explanatory one thing i do want to say don't be impressed with these numbers I've min-maxed Bat Eater for the first time ever on my account. I've never done it before. I have a Draco Morph in here. My Draco Morph, and this is not me misspeaking, does less damage than the team you see in front of you. Oh my god, murder. Draco Morph does less damage than the team in front of you than just OP. Actually, he's not. If you want to be smart and efficient in the end game, you would never waste resources on a clan boss team because anything after whatever it is, 70.4 million damage is a complete waste, especially if you're doing it in one key. So I purposely kept moving gear on the team I had with Dragomorph until I could comfortably one key with Red Affinity. After that, I did not waste a single other piece of gear, didn't glyph any gear because that's a max efficiency there so I can use all of my best gear somewhere else now prior to this i have done some min maxing it's probably been at least six or seven months at this point but draco morph can do over 110 million damage in bat eater think about that for a second over 110 million damage fane can do well over 100 million probably close to what draco morph can do because fane's incredible jin toro if you build him properly if you have toxic sets Fury sets and all these champions if you get lucky with Relentless, Jintoro can do even more damage than Draco Morph on Void Affinity only. Unfortunately, Jintoro isn't good on Red Affinity, so he's not going to be the best overall. That's always going to be Draco Morph. But specifically for Void Affinity, Jintoro is crazy. So seeing this number here of me completely min-maxing this at 88 million may seem good to a lot of people, but unfortunately it falls a bit short and lots of other champions, including Anax, are going to outperform this guy if I put him in the same scenario with the same champions and the same gear. All right, guys, that's going to conclude my video today on the Bat Eater with Ninja new champion. Despite what I've said, it might sound like I'm bashing him. He's a really cool champion. It was fun to watch him. His abilities look cool. We went over that in the last video. So I really don't have too many complaints about this. I really can't stress enough. Like I've said 10 times already, don't look at this saying, this is it murdering showed me this this is going to be crazy op like i said it's not i put so much effort into this team not that i regret it because it's definitely fun to showcase this to you guys as you can kind of tell how excited i am to show ninja after me saying how disappointed i was in him or being a free champion but he isn't supposed to be op this is simply using overpowered gear to kind of showcase him if you want a two key you can two key if you want a three key definitely possible in a bad eater setup if you're willing to go through that setup process give me your thoughts give me your feedback one question for you all give me a comment make sure you comment down below do you want to see this guy in a non-unkillable run i was already given a few suggestions of team comps in my dms I'm kind of waiting to see what the overall feel of it's going to be from you guys after seeing 88 million damage here in 50 turns obviously I can min max probably 100 million key or higher who knows so many champions are broken like Brockney, Chris, all of these guys maybe a 200 million key it's not personally fun for me anymore because I want to get the most done as quick as possible. But if you guys enjoy the content and you want to see a non-unkillable team with Ninja just to see how he does, maybe with someone like a Draco Morph, any other high damage dealers, who knows. But give me your feedback. Let me know in the comments if you want to see this guy in a non-unkillable clan boss team. All right, guys, as always, thank you a ton for watching the video. Thanks for all the support. If you enjoy this content, thumbs up, like, comment, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my next video, and I will see you all in the next upload.